And good evening, everybody, and welcome here to Arizona Speedway, as we are getting ready now for the chase for the championship field to be put together at the end of this 27-lap event. Already, we know a few drivers that are already automatically in the chase for the championship. One of them ended up leading lap number 10 last week at Atlanta, and that, of course, was the driver Jacob Lawler. Now, Lawler actually was one of the drivers, if he had not led that lap, would have come in today mathematically eligible to fall outside of the top 10, so he doesn't have much to worry about. And we also know that four other drivers have made their way into this season's chase for the championship. Mathematically, they cannot fall outside of the top 10 in points today, no matter how bad their finishes. They include Dylan Poteet, Dylan Young, the defending champion Chris Dollerton, and James McLeod. Between the four of those drivers, a total of nine wins this season. So they're going to really be utilizing those wins as far as the bonus points when the chase field is put together. But we know five of the 12 drivers, or the 13 drivers actually, that are going to be in this season's chase for the championship. Now the pressure goes on the drivers to actually come in fifth through 18th. Those are the drivers that are still eligible to either fall out or move into the top 10 in points. That's where the big moves are going to be made. They're going to be the drivers we're going to focus on during the course of the day. Now, the one driver that really gets focused on the most whenever the chase comes around is the driver who comes in 10th in the points, and that is currently Austin LaPlante. Now, what we do is we take and we uh, pretty much use Austin LaPlante as our pinpoint area for who is however far ahead or who is however far behind based on our um, you know, who has the opportunity to make the chase for the championship via top 10. So if we use the Austin LaPlante machine, who's 10th in the point standings, then Adam Chambers, 5th in points, is a total of 25 points ahead of Austin LaPlante. 5th in, or 6th in points, rather, Jacob Lawler, who's already in, he's a total of 24 points ahead. Andy Timmons, who comes in 7th in points, a two-time winner, he is a total of 12 points ahead. Trent Dunham, who comes in 8th in points, he is a total of 10 points ahead. And Charles Jackson, ninth in points, is a total of 7 points ahead of Austin LaPlante. Now, as far as the drivers behind LaPlante, 10th in points, Brian James is 11th in points, 5 points behind LaPlante. Prunes Littlejohn and Noah Hart are 12th and 13th. They both are 8 points behind Austin LaPlante in the standings. Stephen Poehler the 3rd, 14th in points. He's a total of 17 points back. Pichu London, 15th in points, a former winner back at Stunt Road. He is a total of 19 points behind. Nick Bellardo, who is 16th in the points, he is a total of 21 points back. Lyndon Wright, 17th in points, is a total of 25 points back. And Bob Jones, the last driver mathematically eligible to make the top 10 in points here today, is a total of 27 points back from 10th in the points, Austin LaPlante. So LaPlante's got a lot of pressure here too because one false move, boom, he's probably going to be outside the top 10 in the points. So he needs a good run here tonight as well. But those drivers I mentioned here from 5th on down to 18th, those drivers are the drivers that are going to battle it out for a spot inside of the top 10 in points. That would be a chase position. As I look as well at the uh, possible wild card position battle, the everybody that has at least two wins is inside the top 10 right now. We'll have to definitely focus on Andy Timmons. If he finishes well, he'll stay inside the top 10 in points. That then would bring the points battle for the wild card spot between drivers such as Charles Jackson, Austin LaPlante, Brian James, Prudence Littlejohn, and Pichu London, who all have one win apiece. So we're going to have to see between those drivers if Andy Timmons does not fall outside the top 10 in points, who out of those two or out of those uh, five drivers would get the wild card positions. Anyway, let's get to the task in hand. That's tonight's running of the Drive to End Hunger 250. On the pole position is going to be Joshua Michaels. Now, keep in mind, too, that we do not have a two-time winner outside the top 10 in points. If any driver that has a win this season that's outside the top 10 in points picks up his second win, boom, they are right up in the wild card picture. So Joshua Michaels, who ended up winning back, I believe it was at Kansas, Michaels has a big opportunity here to pick up his second one of the season, and just like that, we could see the driver who comes in 27th in points right up there 
in the chase for the championship via the first wild card position. He'll start off alongside of Sean Henley, who I think right now it's basically mathematically impossible for Sean Henley to even get a wild card position, so tough for him. He'll just go out there and try and win. Cody Lamas, our winner from Nazareth, he comes into today's race currently running 37th in points, but as I said, former winner, if he picks up a win tonight, he'd be up in the wild card position. And then Deanna Shelton lining up in the fourth position. She won back at Stunt Road, currently way down 44th in points. But if she won again here tonight, it wouldn't matter. She'd be right up there in a wild card position. And then Lyndon Wright, one of those drivers we were talking about that is mathematically eligible to try and race his way inside the top 10 in points. 17th in the standings right now, 5th in rookie points. He will roll off, completing the top 5 here today. Time to get these cars rolling off. They're going to complete a couple of pace laps, and while they do that, we will show you the starting lineup for today's event. This is the last opportunity for these drivers. After this, we're going to have ourselves 13 drivers that will battle it out for the championship for the Oreo Truck Series. Who will those 12 drivers be, though? Five of them we already know. The other eight remain a mystery. We won't know until the checker flag flies. Let's get this thing underway. Always love coming to Arizona Speedway. It's a great place to be able to have a last chance race here for drivers trying to make their way into the chase for the championship. Always brings about good racing. We'll see what they do here tonight. 27 laps of racing ready to be run. Joshua Michaels and Sean Henley going to get us underway here this evening as the green flag is waving. Now here we go. The chase to the chase is on. The final opportunity as Michael's got a good jump. He'll get ahead of Henley. And I was thinking back to the fact that Sean Henley is mathematically eligible to make both the Mobile and Snickers Cup Series chases for the championship. So he'll be trying to run out front here tonight as much as possible. Get as much experience of what he needs to do here in the Mobile and Snickers Cup Series events to try and make those chases. As Sean Galgan went way down on the apron there. Looks like he held on to it though. He's going to get shuffled in the middle, though, with Bob Jones, and that was a great save. And, oh, looks like the caution flag may be out for the first time today. As at the line, they're all going to cross, and it looks like everybody here is good, but I don't know who that caution was for. And this is when we start to see Chase Hopefuls make moves that they normally would not make, and it costs them. Let's see who was involved in this. Was it any of those Chase Hopefuls? There's Jeremy Mayer, and there is Dylan Young. Dylan Young, who's already clinched himself a spot mathematically in this season's Chase. He's involved, though. There's Alex DeMarco and Max Russell. And, oh, Prunes Little John, 12th in the point standings. Oh, dear. She's got damage. And, oh, there's Chris Dalton too. That's two drivers that come in mathematically uh, confirmed in this season's chase. Dalton and Dylan Young involved here. Oh, James Silverfox has got some damage now on his Arrowhead Chevy Silverado. And everybody else, though, looks like they are okay. Let's see if anybody's going to make any pit stops. Doesn't look like it. Everybody looks like they're going to stay out here on this uh, first caution. But a couple of drivers that actually came in confirmed in the chase involved in this one. But Prudence Littlejohn is probably the, uh, the heartbreak one of this wreck. Let's jump back and see what happened. See if we can find out where the contact began. Right there, Charles Jackson's going to get into Max Russell, turns him straight down into the Chris Dollerton machine, and then Russell goes up, gets the wall. Silver Fox can't hold up, and Dylan Young T-boning the 83. There's a car up ahead that's upside down. Is that the Mark Thomas machine? Yes, it is. Mark Thomas up and on his side. And there's Jeremy Mayer, and there is Prudence Littlejohn just caught in the middle of this nowhere to go. There's DeMarco there on the bottom left as his card spun out. 
But Mark Thomas's car up and against the outside safer barrier, riding sideways, driver's side door down against the pavement. And that's a wild ride for the 25. I think he actually finished on his roof, and that's why we didn't actually see him. I think he was automatically teleported to pit road. Ooh, Dylan Young nearly hit him. That was close. But there's the story right there as far as uh, the chase hopefuls. Prune Siddlejohn, 12th in the point standings. She was a total of 8 points behind Austin the Plan, who was 10th in the standings. And she's got damage now. I don't know if it's enough to retire. We're definitely going to have to update on that as we head back to green now. Green flag about to come back out. We're looking at the 20 of Prune Siddlejohn, who has been able to continue. She's in the 35th position, just trying to see if she can salvage what she can. Dylan Young and Chris Dalton both have kept their cars back on the racetrack, too. So they are still out in front, or not out in front, but out on the racetrack. And Mark Thomas, who was up on his side, flipped over on his roof. He's back on the track as well, but he is a lap down to the leader. So I don't actually think anybody has retired from this race yet. No, only one driver did. Max Russell in the 98 did go back behind the wall. So he was the only retiree out of that wreck, which rather surprises me. Two laps down is actually officially how Mark Thomas is as far as off the lead lap. And here's the top 10 as we get ready to go back to green. Cars are in turn four. It's Joshua Michaels, Sean Henley, Lyndon Wright, John Radigan, Adam Chabers, Cody Lamas, Bob Jones, Sean Galligan, Deanna Shelton, and the points leader, Dylan Poteet, up there in 10th. Green flag ready to come back out here on lap 6 of 27. There it is. Let's see how much of a challenge Mark Thomas is on the inside line. Looks like the damage on his car enough to not have him up to speed with the leaders. And whoa, John Radigan slicing and dicing there right between the lap car and also the 77 of Lyndon Wright. He's going to go underneath his teammate from Hendrick Motorsports for second place just like that. John Radigan, one of those drivers who was mathematically eliminated from making the chase, and he does not have a win this season, so his chances of getting in the wildcard picture are pretty slim. And here comes Adam Chambers down to the bottom, and the caution flags out again. Caution waves one more time. I'm going to be expecting that a lot here tonight and in the Mobile and Snickers Cup Series races because there's just so much on the line. Let's take a look and see who this one involved. DeMarco involved again. There's Jacob Lawler, who actually led lap 10 last week at Atlanta and ensured himself a spot in the chase. Chris Dollerton involved in yet another incident, and Dylan Young. Sean Galligan got a piece of this one, too. Oh, Nick Bellardo, 16th in points. One of those drivers who came in with mathematical eligibility to get inside the top 10 in points. He's got some damage now. Kyle Corbett's got some damage. And I'm not certain, but I almost wonder if Dylan Pote got involved in this. Because Poteet's back at 24th now, and I think he had restarted in 10th place. There's Austin the plant. The driver comes in with the most pressure. He's up to 17th right now, 10th in points. And it looks like some pit stops are going to be made this time. Yes, indeed they are. It's going to be Joshua Michaels, Chambers, Lamas, Radigan, Jones, then Lyndon Wright, Henley, John Radigan, and I believe Eric Burton had moved his way up there to the 9th position. I think that was his red machine that I saw. No, it was Dougie Shears. My bad. Let's see what the strategy is going to be here on lap number 8 of 27. I see Chambers going for right sides. Joshua Michaels doing the same. Looks like it's maybe a regular four-tire stop. No, Kevin White's gone. Two tires and gone. Chambers the same. Joshua Michaels going to just barely beat everybody out. So Kevin White had a nice lightning fast pit stop, picked up some spots on pit road. I think he picked up about seven positions to move up to third. But Joshua Michaels, first on, first off of pit road. Let's jump back now and look at a replay of what put us under the caution for the second time tonight here at Arizona. Well, here it was, coming out of turn number two, right there. Sean Galligan got held up behind the slower car of the Mark Thomas. He gets going to get clipped there by Zach Rogers, and I think it's going to be something that's going to merge up here in the turn three area. We're watching the points leader, Dylan Poteet, and contact between Lawler and Poteet sends Poteet up. Oh, and then Stephen Poehler the third gets a shove. He's going to get sent up into his teammate Kyle Corbin. And that's going to squeeze the 31 up into the outside retaining wall. Now, hold on a second. That was not the reason for Sean Galligan's damage, though. Whoa! Nick Bellardo getting clipped by Dylan Poteet there. That's what sent him up into the wall, and Trent Dunham nearly got a piece of that. But where's Galligan? Well, there's Galligan. I guess nobody hit him. But he did nose the wall. Pretty doggone hard. 
right there. Oh, man, that is a hard hit for Sean Galgan, who was in the Oreo Truck Series Chase for the Championship last season. So multiple-time winner last season, too, and this season has just not quite been going his way. 29th in points and winless, and now he finds himself with a damaged truck. Nearly slid up into Jeremy Mayer, and there's Prudence Little John. Oh, my goodness, that could have almost ended her chase hopes right there if she had hit him. And Chris Dollerton, is he going to get into somebody up here, maybe? There's Lawler, and we know that Nick Bellardo got spun around further up here. Let's see if maybe Dollerton hits Bellardo. No. I wonder if if uh, Dollarton and Dylan Young made contact with each other again. They did. And it was oh, when it was Demarco that spun out up here. Let's see how this one started. This was back after Sean Galligan got in turn. Demarco's just not going to give Prudence Littlejohn any room. She gets squeezed up into the wall. Demarco's car got to snap around on him, and then the contact right there between himself and Littlejohn's going to turn him around. He's going to get a little help there from Jeremy Mayer in the 14 as well. And then Dylan Young comes in, and full speed, nowhere to go, slides up, and Chris Dollerton's going to have nowhere to go. So the second incident tonight that both Chris Dollerton and Dylan Young, second and third in points, have been involved in. And Alex DeMarco's night looks like it may be over. I don't know how bad the damage is on Prunes Littlejohn. It's the second incident she's been involved in, too. And then another few drivers that had some minimal damage. Prune, uh, make that... Uh, pr pr ah, Stephen Polar III is who I'm trying to say. After he had contact with his teammate. And then Nick Bellardo. Hit the wall pretty doggone hard. Don't know if he's going to be able to continue. He came in 16th in points, a total of uh, 21 points out of the 10th position. So let's head back now to the uh, restart, see who's going to be able to continue out of those drivers. They're trying to make their way inside the top 10 in the points mathematically. Getting ready to go back to green flag racing on lap 11 of 27. Mark Thomas will come on the inside line once again since we do not have less than 10 laps to go. Let's try and give you a good, a full field rundown as we can. Michaels is the leader, Adam Chambers second, third is Kevin White, Cody Lamas fourth, and fifth is Eric Burton. Sixth is John Radigan, seventh is Bob Jones, Sean Henley is in eighth, ninth Dougie Shears, tenth Zach Rogers. Then it's going to be Andy Timmons up there in eleventh, so with the way he's running, looks like the wild card position battle could come down to who has one win, or maybe can pick up their second win that's outside the top ten. Brian James trying to get himself back up here into the title picture. He came in only... Five points back from Austin LaPlante, and he's in 12th, so LaPlante would have to be running 18th or worse. Let's find LaPlante as we go through here. McLeod is in 13th, 14th is Linden Wright, 15th is Pichu London. LaPlante is running in 16th place, so he still has a two-point advantage as far as 10th in the points over Brian James. So James still has some more work to do. 17th is Emilio Navrat with Noah Hart in the 18th position. Noah Hart trying to run down Little John, James, and LaPlante. Then it's Alex May and Stephen Polar the third. That's going to be the top 20 as we get ready to go back to green flag racing. So the best battle I think we're going to have to keep an eye on for as far as drivers try to get inside the top 10 in points would be uh, LaPlante, James, Little John, and Noah Hart as the green flag comes back out here on lap 11. Drivers out of the race after all that's gone down in the past two cautions are Sean Galligan, Alex DeMarco, Chris Dalton, Dylan Young, and Max Russell. So Dylan Young, Chris Dollerton basically were able to go out there, do whatever they wanted as far as hard racing. They were able to DNF, and it will not affect them making the chase for the championship. As Chambers now goes to the bottom. Now Chambers, <coughs> excuse me, the way that Chambers is running right now, I think it's pretty much safe to say he's going to be in the chase for the championship. Came in fifth in the point stand. He's up oh, the caution's out again. Are you surprised? I'm not. But Adam Chambers does not have a win this season in the truck series and so he would obviously like to be able to pick up a victory and get the five bonus points that'll help him in the chase for the championship once the chase is put together but the caution's out and let's see who's involved in this one and it was the lap car Mark Thomas oh and Pichu London 15th in the point standings a chase hopeful was only 18 points back or 19 points back I should say from 10th in points and he is involved in this one looks like James McLeod who was one driver insured being in the chase for the championship coming into tonight's race. Looks like he may have gotten a piece of something. Aaron Williams Jr. also on the apron with damage. But there's the heartbreak right there. Pichu London has had absolutely tremendous form in the past few weeks. 
And it looks like his chances of making the chase, though, may be over if he's going to retire from the race. Let's jump back now, take a look at a replay of what happened to Pichu London, Aaron Williams Jr., Mark Thomas, and others to put us under the caution for the third time today here at Arizona. They were four wide here at Arizona, and you just can't do that. They were almost five wide there at a moment, and watch right here. They were five wide, and the contact's going to come between Pichu London and the driver comes in 10th in points, Austin LaPlante, and there's the contact. McLeod gets clipped, nowhere to go, and Mark Thomas runs straight into the back of the 13, and here comes Aaron Williams Jr., and he's going to hit the Pichu London machine. At Prudence Little John, Nick Bellardo, they were able to get through that. So they're going to pick up a few valuable positions here, and that was definitely needed for those drivers to try and get up there and run down others for a spot inside of the top 10 in points. But Pichu London, what a gut-wrenching feeling that must be as he's involved here. James McLeod, who's really been finishing well in the last few weeks, three-time winner, looks like he may be poised to take the uh, tie for the points lead in the chase with Chris Dollerton. But he gets involved here, too. Looks like every driver that's come into tonight's race already locked into the chase for the championship has had problems. Poteet's had damage. Dylan Young and Chris Dolichin are out. We just saw McLeod get involved in something. And I think Jacob Lawler was involved in something earlier on, too. So, very interesting that those drivers are actually targeted here in these caution flags. But nonetheless, we're going to go back to green flag racing. But I think the chase, uh, hopeful Pichu London right there may have just been the blow that's going to deal him a... A rotten hand here tonight of not making this season's chase for the championship. Let's head back to green. Well, one by one, these drivers who come in looking for a chance to get inside the chase for the championship have been getting involved in wrecks and dropping like flies. Prunes Little John has been involved in something. Pichu London, as we saw, has been involved in something, as well as Nick Bellardo and even Stephen Polo III has had a little bit of damage as well. But I am noticing that the drivers that come into this race inside the top 10 that are not insured guaranteed spots in the chase for the championship, we have not seen them involved in any wrecks. We've not seen Chambers involved in any wrecks. Same for Timmons, same for Trent Dunham, same for Charles Jackson, and even Austin LaPlante, 10th in points, has not been involved in anything. So, pretty interesting there. Mark Thomas has actually taken his car back behind the wall, so there'll be no lap car for these drivers to have to contend with. He's the only driver that's DNF'd. From that instant we just saw. So it'll be a single file restart. No lap traffic to contend with. Chambers will be the leader. Kevin White in second. Third Joshua Michaels. Eric Burton fourth. Cody Lamas in fifth. Drivers third, fourth, and fifth have been to victory lane this season already. Looking maybe to get themselves up here. Win a second race. And get a wild card position. John Radigan will be sixth. Seventh Bob Jones. Sean Henley eighth. Dougie Shears ninth. And Brian James right up here in tenth place. Now let's see where uh, Austin the Plant would be running. In correlation with Brian James. He'd have to be running 16th or worse. Where is the six car running? 19th place. Right now, LaPlante would be outside the top 10. Brian James would be in. As the green flag comes back out, Chambers going to get us back underway here. And they're going to go three wide for second place. Now, our last two incidents, our last two cautions, were mainly caused by the slower lap car of Mark Thomas. So it'll be interesting to see if the caution will come out here on this lap due to the fact there's no lap traffic. As here comes Eric Burton. He's looking at the bottom of the racetrack. Burton going to go for the top position. Eric Burton, I believe, won back at Chicagoland. And, oh, I heard some scraping. Heard some scraping back there in turn four. And the caution flag's out. Kevin White is up and into the wall. Riding the wall in the front straightaway. And Eric Burton did beat Chambers to the line. So Eric Burton is going to be the new leader of this race in the Budweiser Chevy. Kind of interesting. Eric Burton ended up winning. Whoa, 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 whoa. Burton's going to get spun. Is he going to hit the wall, though? If he just spins it and saves it, he'll be able to still be the leader. And he will be the leader. Wow. Dodging a bullet there was Eric Burton. He will still be the leader, and he did not sustain any damage. Nice save. But the car that turned him, I was just about to talk about. Eric Burton won at Chicagoland. A week later, it was the rookie Joshua Michaels who won at Kansas. And... Eric Burton, I would not try and take any aggressiveness out on Michaels right now. He's not going to. He's going to go by Michaels. He'll go by Chambers. He'll take the lead position back. Let's see who was involved in that incident. It looks like it was just one machine. The Kyle Thomas machine, number 43. So, it looks like maybe a single car spin may have put us under the caution. Let's find out. Said back to green. Or, not back to green. Said back to a replay. And see what happened to the 43 car. And we had just talked about how Brian James had mathematically been inside the top 10 in the point stand since he was ahead far enough of Austin the Plant. Well, there's the contact between Sean Henley and Kevin White. 
down into the 15 of Brian James, and he's going to slide up right into Dougie Shears, and he sustains some pretty extensive damage. And look at the drivers that are passing him by there. Lyndon Wright's gone by. There goes LaPlante bypassing him. Noah Hart goes by. It's a lot of drivers who came in behind Brian James in the points, and I think you're actually going to see Prunes Littlejohn right there. She's going to get by the 15 as well. So this is not good for Brian James by any stretch of the imagination. He's got to hope that LaPlante runs into some problems now, but Brian James was 10th on the racetrack, was inside the top 10 mathematically in points with where he was running, and just like that, his chase hopes may be over. Brian James, keep in mind, folks, was a former leader of the Oreo Truck Series points, and things in the past four, five, six weeks have just gone absolutely downhill for the driver of the Napa Tundra, and it just continues here tonight at Arizona. So that was the reason the caution came out. Brian James, Kevin White, and Dougie Shears all getting involved in something on the front straightaway. Let's head back to the restart. Getting ready to go back to Green Flag Racing. By the way, uh, the reason that Kyle Thomas was so far back, he came down, made a gas-and-go pit stop, and I think he stayed on the tail end of the lead lap as well. He did. So Kyle Thomas, we know, is good to go on fuel, apparently, because he did that little bit of pit strategy there, and it may work out for him in the long run. But we do know that uh, there's a driver... Nope, no drivers out of the race. Brian James was able to continue on. So was Dougie Shears, so was Kevin White. It'll be a single-file restart with seven laps to go. So we'll go back to Green Flag Racing on lap 21. Eric Burton is the new leader with Adam Chambers in second. Joshua Michaels third. Fourth, John Radigan. And fifth is Bob Jones, the long shot to get into the chase for the championship up here in fifth place. Sixth is going to be Cody Lama. Sean Henley in seventh. Eighth is Emilio Navarrete with Andy Timmons in ninth. And tenth is Tyson Broad. Then you got Stephen Paul the third in eleventh. Twelfth place is going to be Kevin White. Thirteenth, Lyndon Wright. Charles Jackson, 14th. 15th is Alex May. Then it's going to be Dougie Shears in 16th. 17th, Austin LaPlante. Deanna Shelton, 18th. 19th, William Duncan. And Noah Hart is in 20th. Right now, things are looking fairly good for Austin LaPlante. The closest driver he's got to worry about would be Stephen Pollard the third, his teammate, who is in 11th position right now. Because everybody else who comes in behind LaPlante in the points, Brian James, Prunes Littlejohn, and Noah Hart, they're all running behind LaPlante on the racetrack right now. The only one who is not is Stephen Pollard III. And Pollard is 11, no, 17 points back from Austin LaPlante. So right now I think he's only cut that down to about half with where the 99 is currently running. See if we can complete a green flag lap. Nope, the caution flag's out again. And oh, they're wrecking in turn four again. You can hear the scraping. And this looks like this was right up around the 6th position. And that could be problems. Oh boy, look out. Oh, Zach Rogers is involved. Zach, uh, there's the uh, Charles Sanford machine. James Silverfox just ran in. And Brian James, his chase hopes are gone. Someone's upside down. Wait a minute, was that the Andy Timmons machine? Pichu London's on pit road. I'm trying to find who else was there. Danny Wells is on pit road, but I think he made a pit stop. Brian James, Zach Rogers, Jeremy Mayer. Aaron Williams Jr. Oh, it was Charles Jackson! Ninth in the point standings! And only... What was he? He was only seven points ahead of Austin LaPlante! Oh, dear. James Silver Fox also with damage. But Charles Jackson was running so well today. And just like that, his chances of making the chase may be going up in smoke. Dougie Shears, more damage. Dylan Poteet, Samfer. I think they were involved in this. Kyle Thomas may have gotten a piece of this incident as well. It looks like Emilio Navarrete heading to pit road. Our winner from Talladega was involved. And he was trying to get up there, maybe win a second race and get a wild card position. And there is Austin LaPlante. 16th place right now. He's obviously running much better than Charles Jackson, more than seven positions ahead. And so LaPlante may displace Charles Jackson for ninth in the point standings and now put Jackson in the hot seat as far as drivers trying to run him down to get inside of the top 10 and knock him out of the top 10 in points. Nonetheless, we're under the caution. Let's head back and see what happened. I think we had two different wrecks take place here as we are in the closing stages of this race. When we get the, hit the straight next time, there'll be four laps to go. Well, here's actually what the caution flag came out for. This was a battle around the 17th position. Poteet's going to shove Dougie Shears. 
Little John's going to shove Poteet, and then Poteet comes up, gets clipped by the Silver Fox machine, and they're going to go up into the outside retaining wall. Look at Brian James, how he was able to get the needle through the... Get the thread through the out of the needle there. I don't know. Thread the needle. That's the word I'm looking for. The phrase I'm looking for. And that was actually what brought the caution flag out. That little hit there for the 2131 and 4. Now, there was something else that's going to take place. Yes, they're right there. With Aaron Williams Jr. and Kyle Thomas. And this takes place just around the same time. Kyle's just going to flat out turn the 48. Right there is going to be the contact. Straight up into the wall goes the Lowe's Impala. And oh my goodness. Not an Impala, Silverado, my bad. But you see the hit he took. Good heavens. I just completely punched the entire front end in on that number 48 machine. And there's the Kyle Thomas machine who had actually tried using some pitch strategy. In case it was going to work and maybe move himself up to the front. Maybe take the win. But that obviously did not work out to his benefit. Turning the 48. And then... After the caution was waving, let's jump up to the 15 car. Actually, I think it's going to start even further up. I think it starts up here with Navarrete, maybe. Lawler's going to get turned around by Zach Rogers, but let's jump up to the 75. There he is. Or the 78, rather, not the 75. Yeah, right there. Sean Henley is going to get into the Cody Lamas machine. That was a battle for the sixth position there. Joshua Michael is a part of that as well. But then the contact's going to come. The 88 going to get into the 39. Cody going to get turned up the racetrack right in front of Emilio Navarrete. Navret. Navret's going to get the damage as well. It's a couple of former winners there. Stephen Pohl, the third, gets held up behind this. And there's Charles Jackson going to run right in the back of Henley. And this isn't over. This is still going to continue on here. Jackson's going to get hit from somebody because I think he's the car that flipped over. I think Lawler actually got turned around back here somewhere, too. Oh, yeah, he got turned around. And then it was up into Zach Rogers, Brian James, and Charles Sanfer. And then let's see who flips over the 42. Oh, it was Jeremy Mayer. Holy cow. Jackson was trying to get his car turned back around to continue on. Not that much damage for the 42, but then, oh, my goodness, just a, the side swipe. I never thought the side swipe would actually be enough to flip a truck over, but apparently it was a violent enough hit. And, oh, Pichu London and Dylan Poti. Good heavens, who did they hit? Whoever it was, it was at full speed. It was Brian James. There were a couple of drivers coming down making pit stops, too. Danny Wells came down and made a pit stop during this. But watch the 15 of Brian James. Here comes Pichu London into view. And he's going to nail the 15 of Brian. And then here comes Poteet. And wham! He's going to get hit right there. That's going to turn his car around. He's going to slide straight up into the back of the 13 of Peachy London. Ironic. The reverse numbers back to back with each other. The 31 and the 13. But that's the points leader, Dylan Poteet and Peachy London, who was just trying to salvage something. Jeremy Mayer was running fairly well tonight. And he gets involved here. And there you see the... Flagman got a good view of it. Right underneath his little flag stand there. Lots of disabled trucks. So obviously he knew that it was ready and it was time to wave that yellow flag. But the caution flag is out and all of a sudden, folks, this chase is starting to take shape. And drivers are starting to fall by the wayside. And it's really going to come down really to who is going to be able to get in there by the skin of their teeth. Let's head back now to the restart. I think we're going to have a shootout to finish out tonight's race. It'll be a green-white checker to finish out this evening's event. If the caution comes out at any point during the green-white checker, the race will be declared over, and the person first of the line will win this race under caution. We have not been able to complete a green flag lap all evening, so the odds of us getting around this green flag uh, segment, this two-lap segment, are not in our favor, but maybe, just maybe, they can do something. Eric Burton is currently the leader. Burton comes into this race 25th in points, but he's a former winner back at Kansas. If he can pick up his second win, he will automatically get himself into the chase for the championship, I think, via wild card position. Adam Chambers, I think we can safely say he'll be in the chase for the championship, came in 5th in points, was the first driver that was mathematically not in the chase for the championship, but runner-up right now, he probably will make it. John Radigan, 3rd. Bob Jones having a great run, but I think the long shot's not going to quite be able to get it done. 
He'll finish. He'll be restarting in fourth. Joshua Michaels will be in fifth. Tyson Broad sixth. Henley with damage is seventh. Kevin White eighth. Ninth is Lyndon Wright, and Alex May completes the top ten. Now, here comes the important part on this green white checker segment. Charles Jackson, did he go behind the wall? Yes, he did in the 34th position. He's got to worry about, I believe, see, Brian James is out of the race. Prudence Littlejohn. Let's see. Jackson finishes 34th as the green flag's back out. 34th place, Prudence Littlejohn came behind Jackson, a total of 15 points back. She would have to be running in the 18th position or better. 18th place or better for Prudence Littlejohn, and we're still green flag racing. Where's Prudence running? She in 18th. She is 19th. And there's contact between her and Henley and McLeod. Look out. Oh, Little John may be making this thing as the white flag is out. Here we go. It's going to be the leader, Eric Burton. 18th place or better. That's where Prudence Little John has to finish so she can get inside the chain for the championship. Charles Jackson would then fall out. Someone just wrecked back there. Someone scraped the wall, but they're still green flag racing. Eric Burton, the leader. Radigan in second. Radigan does not look like he's close enough to make a move. Out of turn four for the final time. Eric Burton will get into the chase for the championship via a wild card position. He wins here tonight. The drive to end hunger, 250. And where did Prudence Little John finish? She finished in 18th. She got 18th place. I think Prudence Little John. Oh, 17th. There's the insurance. Prudence Little John, I think, has made the chase. And I think she's replaced Charles Jackson. Wow. Now, wait a minute. Noah Hart came into this race tied with Prunes Little John, though. And Noah Hart finished in 13th place. So, wait a minute. I think, actually, Noah Hart may have actually made the chase. Because he did finish ahead of Prunes Little John, and they came in tied. Tied for 12th. So, actually, we may be looking at Noah Hart as the chase contender that has made his way in. We gotta wait for the official word from NASCAR to find out for certain. But I think, I'm not certain, but I think. We gotta find out, wait, 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 where did Trent finish? 15th place, that might have been good enough. Oh boy. I think, I'm not certain, but I think that the drivers that made their way into the, the chase via top 10 were Chambers, Lawler, Timmons, Dunham, LaPlante, and Noah Hart. But I'm not certain. We gotta get the official word. But there's your winner right there, Eric Burton in the 8th car. He is going to go to victory lane here tonight for the second time this season, and he will get in via a wild card position. Now, here's the thing, though. Here is the thing. If, if Noah Hart has replaced Charles Jackson inside the top 10 in points, it would then come down to who would get that second, card, second wild card spot. We already know that Eric Burton, with his second win here tonight, is going to be in the chase via wild card spot number one. With Prunes Little John still finishing ahead of Charles Jackson in points, she has a victory. That was back at Phoenix. Charles Jackson, I think, would be behind her in points, and so Prunes Little John, I think, would get wild card spot number two. But I'm not certain. I don't know for certain. We're going to wait for the official word after this video. But nonetheless, here is your official top ten for this evening's event. Eric Burton gets himself into the chase for the championship with his second win of the season. He gets a wild card spot, so congrats to him. He wins the drive to end hunger 250. John Radigan, so close, but he'll finish second. Third place was Joshua Michaels. Lyndon Wright in fourth. And Alex May comes away with fifth. Tyson Broad with sixth. Andy Timmons, he'll stay in the top ten. He will be in the chase. He gets seventh. Kevin White was eighth. William Duncan ninth. And Deanna Shelton completes the top ten here this evening. But folks, we are through. And the 13 drivers that will be in the Oreo Trucks for the chase for the championship are moments away from being shown to you. So, we are going to step aside now and head to our official chase grid and find out what 13 drivers are going to be battling out for 10 races here in the chase for the championship in Season 6 of the NSRA Oreo Truck Series. Hope you guys enjoyed this evening's race. If you did, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe, subscribe to become part of the crew today. Here comes your official fishing results, overall point standings, but first we'll show you the chase points heading in to next 
week's race. We got Mobile Snickers Cup Series action coming your way. Hope to see you there, as those chase fields will be put together as well. You've been watching Production of the NCAA, Offline Wrestling is Best. Here comes the 13 drivers that will battle it out for this season's Chase for the Championship. Alright, so there's going to be no epic uh, background music or anything this time, because I'm going to actually be walking you guys through uh, just exactly how the chase field has been brought about and everything. So as you're taking a look here at the official fish results, um, I'm going to bring up the point standings here, so that way I can see just exactly what you guys are seeing and be able to explain it to you. So uh, as, as we're looking at the rookie points here, uh, the rookie points are going to look no different throughout the season. They're going to stay this way, um, even though both uh, Andy Timmons and Noah Hart and Prunes Little John, we found out, we have found out now, have all made the chase. But uh, okay, here is a look at uh, the what the point stands would look like if the chase was not beginning right now. If you look, the drivers that are in the top 10 automatically get in. Dylan Poteet, Dylan Young, James McLeod, Chris Dollerton, Adam Chambers, Andy Timmons, Jacob Lawler, who apparently didn't really need that uh, insured chase spot because he made it in via top 10 anyway, Trent Dunham, Austin the Plant, and Noah Hart did get into the top 10 in points, so he is going to be in the chase for the championship. Now, we already know that uh, Eric Burton, who actually, they believe, moved up to 18th in points, he actually uh, is going to get the first wild card spot. The second wild card spot, you notice, in 11th position is Prudence Littlejohn, finished two spots ahead of Charles Jackson, who both had one win apiece. Because Prudence Littlejohn was higher than Charles Jackson and was outside the top 10 in points, Prudence Littlejohn will be getting the final wild card spot, wild card spot number two, into the chase for the Oreo Truck Series Championship. So Charles Jackson, who came in ninth in points, he is not going to be battling it out for the championship this season. I'll give you guys the opportunity to look at what the rest of the finishing, uh, what the standings would have looked like here after uh, today's race. And then as that happens, then we will show you here in just a moment here as we're waiting for the uh, rest of the points to be done. All right. Now, the next thing you're going to see is your Oreo Truck Series Chase for the Championship point standings as far as the chase is concerned. Because of Jacob Lawler getting that insured spot and also making the top 10 in points, there's only going to be 12 drivers in this chase. There will be 13 in, uh, I believe, 13 in the Mobile and 13 in Snickers, but there will be only 12 here in Oreo Trucks. Now, James McLeod, Chris Dalton, they had three wins apiece, so they are going to be tied atop the point stands with 1,015 points apiece. The 15, of course, being five bonus points for each win. Then Dylan Young, Andy Timmons, and Eric Burton with his win here today at Arizona. They're going to be the two-time winners. They will be tied for what would be third place with 10, 10 points apiece. And then the drivers that had a win this season, Dylan Poteet, Austin LaPlante, and of course Prudence Littlejohn getting in via one of the wild card positions. They are going to have 1,005 points apiece. And then the drivers that made it in but didn't have a win this season, they will have 1,000 points. Adam Chambers, Jacob Lawler, Trent Dunham, and Noah Hart. So it's going to be three rookies that make their first ever chase for the championship. We'll see how they do. We'll also be keeping an eye on every one of these drivers, see how they do as they try and begin their quest now, a 10-race quest, to become Season 6 Oreo Truck Series Champion. All right, folks, that's basically it. Hope you guys are going to enjoy this chase season as much as I'll enjoy bringing it to you. As I said, we got the chase for mobile and chase for Snickers to still compile, and those races will be coming out very soon. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching Production Dance Array, Offline Racing at its best. Bye, everybody.